Welcome to the Hyman Cast, a podcast of the Hyman Settlement School, where we explore the history, culture, and people that make the Settlement School what it is today, and how this historic institution will continue to serve its mission of celebrating heritage and changing lives in Central Appalachia. I'm Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And welcome to the second episode of the Hyman Cast. Uh, we had a pretty good success with the first episode, I would say. It's Sarah Kate. With Sarah Kate Morgan, it was a, a good conversation, good interaction there. Um, looking at the stats, uh, we ended up having about twelve different states from people where they listened from. Yeah, we had uh, we had Kentucky, Maryland, Atlanta, Indiana, Virginia, Florida, Florida Georgia, Michigan. <laughs> what? I wrote that down as Atlanta, but it's just Georgia. Oh yeah, it is just Georgia. <laughs> it? Michigan, Illinois. Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, Massachusetts, and our good friend that Corey knows in Guadalajara, Mexico. I'm glad you said it because I can't. We're so popular that we are we are already broadcasting in other countries. Um, not to mention that that is my cousin. Shout out to my cousin Tia down in Guadalajara, Mexico, uh, doing mission work down there, uh, doing the good work. Um, so uh, we got a. a Different episode than what we were planning this week. We were planning on having a conversation with Kristen Smith at the Wrigley Tap Room about dumplings and dancing coming up next week, uh, but she was unable to have an interview with us. Something came up there. Uh, so we went with our, our next interview, and that is Ola Pigman, uh, the Dyslexia Program Director here at the Hyman Settlement School. Ola, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you with us. Um, we're excited to talk about uh, the dyslexia program, uh, one of our um, sort of keystone programs here at the Settlement School, uh, the longest running program, I would say, that we have. Uh, it's been going on since 1980 or so, somewhere around there. Early 80s, yes. Okay. It's, all, it's right at 40 years now yeah. and that we've been doing our so program. That is our, our main program here at the Settlement School and uh, has went underwent a Big expansion this year, and we're going to get to that with Ola uh, later on in the Here episode. In what was that? Here in a little bit. Here yeah. in a little bit, yeah. Uh, but first, Ola, we want to just uh, kind of talk to you about um, your background um, and the early days of the settlement school. How did you uh, get involved with the settlement school? Um, you yeah. know, what's your origin story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, I came to the settlement school through Mark, Mike Mullins, uh, Michael Mullins was one of the original owners of the Troublesome Creek Times, and I was the uh, first advertising sales manager with the Troublesome Creek Times, and so I got to know Mike through that. And then when I decided that I wanted to do something more with my life, uh, make more of a difference uh, in the world, and I wanted to go back and become a teacher and help those children who were struggling with learning to read. And so I went to Alice Lloyd College, and uh, then when I graduated, Mike called me and said, we want you to come work in our dyslexia program. And my first reaction to Mike was, well, you know, you don't want me because I don't have any experience. Uh, you want someone with experience. And Mike says, no, we don't want anyone with experience. We want someone without the experience so we can train you the way that we need you you know, to work with the kids. So I came to work at the settlement school, and that was about 25 years ago, and uh, have loved it. Uh, it's now working with kids with uh, learning differences is a passion for me. And even though I technically retired about three years ago, I'm still here. Yeah, we just won't <laughs> let you go, will we? <laughs> Can't leave. I've always found that with teachers that retired. It's like they were, they were gone for a year, and then they couldn't stand – being home, I guess, and came back eventually. <laughs> so, but you just never left, though, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what were things like back when you first started? I guess it's probably a lot different than what it is now. It really is. Uh, when I first uh, came here, we were using uh, what we call DPSL. It was the DePaul Structured Language, and it was definitely structured. Uh, the, way that the children were taught was very much very different than what it is today. Uh, we did things, this was actually even before I came, they, some of the practices that they used with the kids, you know, the diet, that type of thing was much more strict 
than you know what we do today. Uh, and so we went from DPSL to I think next was uh, uh, I forget what it was called now. Uh, next was oh well another program that was basically the same type of stuff and then about a little over 10 years ago uh, we heard uh, this lady uh, Susan Barton speak and it was just like wow this lady understands children with dyslexia and so uh, three of us, uh, our teachers, went down to North Carolina and were trained by Susan Barton. It was a week's training, and it's probably the most intense training that I've ever uh, been involved with because when she said she starts at 8 o'clock, she started at 8 o'clock, and we went straight through until lunchtime at 12, and she said we'll be starting back at 1 o'clock. And we started at 1 o'clock right on the dot, and went until 5 o'clock, and we took a, a, off an hour for supper. And then she had a program, which this was, you know, you could attend if you wanted to or not, but another program starting at 6 o'clock, and it went to 8. And so this was for five days, you know. Just like full, like, what is that, like 16-hour days just about it? Was, it? it was something like that. I mean, like I said, it was the most intense uh, training I've ever been involved in, and it was really great. And we came back, and we thought, wow, we're going to do this. And we started the program then and uh, started training our you know, tutors for after school and summer school. And it's been really great ever since. Uh, uh, much greater grant gains for our children uh, uh, now in summer school. Average gain for uh, summer is right at a year's gain for a five-week program. So we feel like it's, it's really done well. Uh, of the kids who've actually stuck with the program and finished uh, the 10 levels of Barton, uh, we've only had two that I can think of who have finished the program and has not been reading at above a 12th grade level uh, when they finished the program. And those two that did not read at 12th grade level, one was a 6th grader and the other uh, was a 10th grader, and they were both reading at, at a high school level. I think they were both reading at 10th grade level. It's phenomenal. Like 40 really years, is. two kids, yeah. and they, they still ended up reading higher than they, right. than they were in grades. So that's... Incredible. So just for people like myself that doesn't, like I have an idea of what dyslexia is, um, could you give us a, a description of what exactly dyslexia is? Okay. What are the characteristics? Okay. Um, dyslexia is actually an auditory processing disorder. Okay. A lot of people say, oh, dyslexia, okay, that's those people who see things backwards. And no, they don't see things backwards. They see it just the way that everybody else does. It's just they have difficulty uh, with remembering uh, direction. And so they confuse things, not only directions left and right, but things like uh, over and under, before and after. Anything dealing with direction, they will have difficulty with. That's interesting. You know, I'm involved, you know, I'm involved with a dyslexia program. I actually never knew, knew that. Yeah. You know, I'm just, the hiring tutor side of it is what I'm not about, <laughs> but that's, that's cool. That's, that's kind of like a different perspective I've been given. Right. It's yeah. really, really neat. And, you know, they have difficulty uh, doing anything in, that's in a particular sequence, even like, you know, tying your shoes. Uh, we used to say that uh, we could go into the, an elementary school and just look at their feet you know, and if those were the flapping shoestrings, those were the ones that were probably dyslexic. Sometimes I feel like I may have been that kid. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now, you know, with uh, Velcro, you can't really d use that. So Yeah, I was a Velcro kid, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, things like uh, telling time on an analog clock, one with the hands. Our kids really have trouble learning to tell time that way because before and after, you have to understand those concepts and be able to, to deal with them in order to tell time on an analog clock. Interesting. So what are uh, some of the uh, 
things that you all do with the Sarah Barton program to help mediate. Um, Susan Barton. Susan Barton. Not, yeah. What did I say? Sarah, <laughs> Sarah. Barton. <laughs> Susan Barton uh, program to uh, to help the students. To, okay. Uh, well, the, the first level, uh, we actually deal with phonemic awareness. And uh, in that level, we're not even working with actual graphemes, the letters. Uh, it's entirely the sounds. And so we teach them to be able to distinguish the different sounds within a word. Like uh, the dyslexic uh, child will probably have difficulty hearing all the sounds like in the word cat, okay? The k at. Basically, all they hear is cat. They don't hear the k at. And they would have difficulty uh, being able to say, okay, if I take that k sound away and change it to b, my new word is bat. Okay, or if I just take the, the b sound away, my new word is at. Basically, to have good phonemic awareness, you have to have that, be able to do those skills in your head, not on paper. So that's what we work on first, is teaching them phonemic awareness. And after we do that... Is that kind of what you do with, like, I see the like the charts, and you got, I see you moving like the, oh, that might be math that I'm thinking of, but you, like, move around the t- little... Squares. I guess mm-hmm. you're probably. I guess you're probably revealing another letter. Right. And say like well, at it, turns to cat now or something like that. Right. But with that first level, the phonemic awareness level, there's not even any letters on the tiles. It's just colored tiles. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Is that you guys just use the the colored tiles and it's like, was it like a yellow for a vowel or something like that? Well, that's when we move into actually using the the letters or the graphing. Okay. Those tiles actually have letters on them. The blue ones are uh, the consonants, the yellow ones are the vowels, and it, it gets much more complicated. We get orange and green, and when we get into, you know, like uh, different uh, different word parts and that type of thing. So, but uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's 10 different levels, uh, and we go from the phonemic awareness, which is the first level, uh, up to, uh, I think the last letter or the last level is they're dealing with foreign, foreign words, the influence of foreign words on our language. Oh, like uh, uh, like French, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. French influence, like buffet with the two S. Right. And, yeah. I took right. I took biblical Greek, and that's the only way I survived that class. And it's like right. I recognize that word. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can and tell what that means. At one of the levels, we actually uh, look at the Latin and Greek influence on our language, and of course, that really is a big help to kids and once they start college. You know, being able to just yeah, figure I think out I, what I think word. I learned more about English taking Greek. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I, learned, well, my, I learned the language I actually speak better. Yeah. <laughs> my husband always said that he had Latin in the high school, and he said that was the biggest help to him of anything because so many of our like words are built. They don't even teach Latin. Latin anymore. No, like, they don't. Like in my school, I mean, the only way I got Latin was through a medical terminology class, and that's like a feeder class into the CNA program. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like it's just probably memorizing. Yeah. It's memorizing. Words. Like, I still know that zebra is zebra, and it's the brain. Don't know why those are connected, but that's the program. So <laughs> that's how it works. And they learn, you know, little tricks like American words don't end with I. So if you have a word like ski, it comes from Norwegian, you know. Huh? That's, I, didn't, I didn't know that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Or spaghetti, you know. Oh, Italian, right? right? <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. It's, it's, cool. it's really interesting, you, and you, you learn a lot, like, uh, you know, everybody's learned, you know, that uh, when a word ends with an E, you know, it's, the E is silent, you know, and it makes the, the vowel before it say its name. Well, we learn that there's a lot more other things that that E does besides just that. So it's, it's, it's really interesting. I've learned a lot myself. Yeah. yeah. I, I probably need to come sit in. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we homeschool our girls and like there's there's so many times it's like you know like an e or something like make a different sound at the end of a word or something you're just like it just makes a different sound i don't really know why but yeah. just remember that it does i guess english but though is just it's really, a struggle anyway because yeah. it's like a mosh pit of like a thousand different languages mixed together anyway so it's yeah. just but the barton method would be a good way you know to teach anyone to read a very good way it's just that's the way that a dyslexic person really needs to learn that way. They, 
most people learn to read more by sight than anything else. You know, you just see the word so many times that you learn a few little rules and you learn, okay, that the B says B and that type of thing. But most of your reading, you're doing it by sight, but the dyslexic cannot learn it that way. They have to, to have a learn rules for why we pronounce words the way we do. They don't make connections like, like uh, when you, like the oat, oat, okay, that's, you learn that word, and so from oat you can do boat and coat and float and all that, and you just make those connections, but the dyslexic kid doesn't make those connections. You have to point it out to them. Oh. So that's why it takes them so much longer to learn to read. Yeah. Um, so how long has it been since the, the dyslexia program has been a full-time school? It used to be full-time, right? Uh, yes. It's been a, just a little over 10 years, uh, and we really miss our full-time school. Yeah. Uh, it was so w- well, it was... What was the difference between that and what we're doing now? You think like is it? Do you think it's more beneficial for us to be going into the school systems like we are, or how does that? How does that work? Well, I think there are pros and cons. Uh, we get to to work with more children now than we did before because you know when we had the full time school, we usually had about thirty kids, and. You know, that's not a lot, whereas now, you know, each year we work typically in the past. Of course, it's changed this year, but uh, in the past we were working with about 120 kids each year. So that's the big difference. Uh, But we work with each child for 30 minutes a day, whereas before we had them all day. Uh, We spent, every day we spent an hour and a half working on reading skills whereas now we spent 30 minutes, and so that's the big difference, you know. It's um, but I, I guess, like, during the summer, like, a lot of students can get caught up that way, too, if they come to summer school. Um, right. So that's always good. Um, so um, what do you think uh, that the settlement school starting this program has brought to Eastern Kentucky um, through it? How's it benefited um, obviously, helping kids read. Um. I think it's been a, a tremendous help to uh, not not only not County, but really Eastern Kentucky, uh, because this is the only program in Eastern Kentucky. It's one of the few in Kentucky that actually you know serves kids with dyslexia, and of course, uh, in Lexington, you know you can get someone to tutor your child in, in Susan Barton but you may be paying $60 an hour, whereas, you know, we teach our parents how to work with the kids, and so they don't really have to pay that much. Yeah, Yeah. that's That's another thing about our program, too, ain't it? You know, like we, the parents, if they come in and tutor, they can get their kids tutored for free. Right. Right. Which, you know, is not something that you would be able to get elsewhere, and especially for this area, you know, it's... Yeah, and and that's equipping the parents to... To take yeah, responsibility, too, and do it themselves at home whenever, you know, you're and, not able and to. And I think it helps them understand their child a little bit better, too, because it's easier to work with someone else's child. See, they, when they come here, they don't actually tutor their own child. They tutor someone else's. And we found that it's much, much easier to tutor someone else's child. And you don't get as frustrated. And, and those someone else's child doesn't know which buttons to push you know, which your own child does and that type of thing. I definitely knew how to push buttons. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them do. I don't think I ever pushed buttons. I was an angel child. Oh, I pushed them. I pushed the buttons until <laughs> so they broke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, so you, you enjoy helping kids with dyslexia, but can you tell us, like, what it means to you to be able to help these child- children with dyslexia and, you know, what value that brings to you? Well, I can't really describe it, but... There's just something special about when you begin to see the light go on in their head and see them begin to feel, you know, more self-confident and to know, you know, that you're making a difference in that child's life, that you're giving them the chance to succeed. Because in 
this country in particular, but in the world and as a whole, if you can't read, your chances of having a successful life are just really cut almost to nothing. You have to be able to read in today's world. And Back in the day, it's just like you could get by not reading. You just do some manual labor job. But today, to even do that, you got to read and sign a paper. Right. You know, even a mechanic, you know, uh, my husband has worked with uh, mechanics for years and, you know, used to, you know, they just learned how to to work on a car, this, that, and the other. But now they have to be able, you know, to to do schematics and all this other stuff. Uh, computer engineer right <laughs> and so you know you have to you have to be able to read today and you know even to go into a restaurant you know and order food yeah because you can't just walk walk in sit down and be like i'll have this because you don't know what they have right right it's interesting um so how how would you say uh, things are going right now in the era of 2020 uh, that has certainly shaken things up a lot um, yes. with c- the coronavirus and everything going on. How are you all adjusting to that? Well, it's a learning experience every day. <laughs> I think uh, Jordan or Josh one said it best. You know, it's like taking two steps forward or you, you think you, what was it? You, it, it was you, what, in Jordan? Uh, I think I described it as uh, trying to hit a moving target while blindfolded. Yes. It's, it's a challenge every day. Yeah. You think you have a plan and find out. Oh, <laughs> the plan just gets upended. The- yeah, yeah, and it, this is every day. And that's really hard for me because I am, my husband says OCD, uh, I have to have a plan, and I I like things working by the plan, and so it's like like you were saying, you never you've not heard more words out of me than you've heard, you've heard more words out of me today on the podcast. Just uh, yes. but like if I don't have a detailed plan of how things are going to go beforehand, I don't want to talk. <laughs> like I don't, it's got to be in, up here first in a detailed plan. If that just got upended that right. morning or something, I would freak out. <laughs> so I don't I don't understand how teachers do it every day. No, this and this year, you know, parents are frustrated uh, because they don't know. You know, they're having to do things that they are not trained to do. They're having to deal with the technology and all of that. And of course, it's just it's wild. (laughs) I mean, just like Corey said, like no one was given that detailed plan. You know, it's like, oh, I have to use a computer and have a computer and know how to use Zoom and go to meeting and all this. It's up in the air and it's been frustrating for us i think because uh we have the program that we used in summer school and did it remotely and it worked really well and we had really good success this year but yet we've been trying to take this out to the schools and we just number i don't know it's just not working (laughs) uh the parents uh do not have the computers that they the children's need in order to to use the program uh, we have difficulties setting up schedules so that type of thing but but it's it's progressing we're making progress uh most of our our tutors now have close to a full schedule and you know so we're making progress we'll get there we'll get through this together (laughs) so let's talk a little bit about the dyslexia expansion obviously that's been a big thing on your mind for the past probably year or more i don't know how long it's been going on of planning and writing grants and getting things ready um so tell us a little bit about what has happened with that grant um who's funding it and uh all the details of that well it's an americorps grant and uh we were funded for it's like 1.6 million dollars is that right george i'm not good with numbers ola i just i just hire the people (laughs) Uh, and uh, we had originally uh, looked at hiring 40 tutors and placing these tutors in all the schools here in Knott County, all the elementary schools in Knott County, Perry County, and Floyd County. But uh, we had no more than gotten the, inf- the notification that uh, we had received the grant, and this whole situation with COVID hit. And so because of that, we decided we needed to scale things back. So 
we are working in all the schools in Knott County and four schools in Perry County. So we've hired uh, 17 tutors uh, to do this. And like I said, it's, it's, it's been challenging just simply because we don't, we had originally planned out to go and work with uh, small groups. We're not able to do that because they're not allowing us to pull more than three children at a time. And so we've been really lucky uh, that the people who are sponsoring the grant have said that it's okay. Uh, you know, we don't expect you to be able to serve, you know, I think it was we were supposed to serve 20, 21 kids at a day each tutor was so uh, we're not coming anywhere close to that just simply because of the whole situation with COVID and but we, we can't really help that though you know it's, no you know we're we're doing the best we can with what we got right and that's what we hear from you know all of our sponsors is that you know well we're really amazed that you're doing yeah. that yeah. <laughs> and so it's just it's frustrating for me and for my teachers because we're used to doing more and, and we want to do more and we know how important reading is to these kids and everything and um, so we're just concerned about them and so but we'll it's keep the best it. concern to have honestly yeah well hats off to you and your team for trucking through it this year as <laughs> I know you all were nervous about it in the beginning and we then were. I'm sure just a global pandemic didn't make that any right. better but it's you know it's great that you all have, you all have adjusted and adapted and right. you know, still got it off the ground and it's going great from what I can gather um, so uh, how many how many students would you say that we're serving now with the expansion uh, let's see we've got I'm not good at math so each student I think has about eight or each uh, tutor has about eight students so 17 times eight so I went, to do, I went to Bible college. I don't do math. Yeah, um, I was a communications <laughs> major, so y'all at home can do the use the calculator <laughs> on that. Yeah, um, and so when we're in the process of recruiting more tutors for the next round, right. um, and that will expand into Leslie County and any other places. I Just Leslie County right now, because okay. that's where we got our, right. our foot on the ground. But we plan on moving into you know Breathed and Breathed. all of those yeah. in Letcher County. Letcher County too, yeah. and we'll be in Hazard High School next time too, right? Are we? No. Oh, okay. No. I thought you all were having a meeting there. So, don't oh, well. Know. Hazard oh. Elementary. Oh, Hazard. They, oh, I, it's yeah. Hazard Independent Schools is right. what I mean, not Hazard yeah. High School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, it's exciting. It's a big time. It big really times. is. Yeah, it's... But we've it's gone fun. from, what was it, five employees to 20? Yeah, <laughs> Back to, to math again. Yeah, over 20 here, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's amazing what, what has been done this year uh, with the dyslexia program. I had nothing to do with it, but I watched you all hiring people and going through all the all the resumes and uh, all that good stuff. And it's, it looked like a lot of work, a lot of organizing, a lot of background checks. It definitely was. Yeah. Yes. It definitely was. Jordan and Josh have really done a, a, the biggest part of getting that everything started. Well, thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> what would we do without Jordan here? We wouldn't have a podcast. I'd still be alone. No uh, podcast. Yeah, it'd just be the Corey show over the here. Corey show. <laughs> so nobody behind nobody would want to listen. <laughs> no one wants to listen to me here either. So, <laughs> hey, people like the troublesome boys. Yeah, we think. We think. We'll try. Eighty we keep eighty people downloaded the past two podcasts. So, I mean, that's that's nothing to boast about, but. We're, guys pre- would, we're pretty proud of it. If you guys would share the podcast. Yeah, if you share the podcast, we might get that up a little bit more, get this out there a little bit further. Um, so, yeah. How would you say that the uh, expansion is going this year? Um, everything going well, you would say? or I think it is. You know, considering that we're in the midst of this COVID pandemic, I think things are going well. Uh, it's just, you know, like I said, I'm, my OCD kicks in every day and, I just want more. <laughs> Never satisfied. I can relate. <laughs> but I, overall, I think it is going well. Uh, and we're learning a lot and how to deal with different situations. Right. We've, we've learned to do Zoom and tutor online and you know, keep kids uh, focused 
when you can't say, okay, <laughs> let's sit down here and let's do this. So I would say that's a big challenge. Yeah, if anything, we've learned how to be adaptable. So Yeah. Yes. 2020, the year of adaptability. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no comment. No comment. 2021 is going to be better. We, we hope. hope. <laughs> Jinx. Uh, okay. Oh, some other questions you got down here, Jordan? Yeah, I made the list this week. So <laughs> uh, so you've been working with us for a while now, Ola. What would you say is the craziest thing that happens since you've been working here? Too many to, to decide which one to choose? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I can... I remember one of my students, a uh, very ADHD kid, and he was not able to take medication. He, the parents had tried medication with him, but there was some kind of a medical conflict or something. But one Halloween, we had to actually let the kids have a Halloween party. This was back when we had a full-time student school. And I thought he was going to say back when we could party, but now we can't party. <laughs> well, we, we let them have a Halloween party. And, of course, you know, they're eating all this candy and everything. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, he's going to be wild. Well, turns out this kid, the chocolate calms him down. That's a little counterintuitive. Yes. It's the caffeine in it. Oh. So after that... Any time that he was just really, really hyper, I would send him down to Lima, and she would give him some candy. It's a Hershey bar. And he would calm down. <laughs> so what you're saying is that I need to start acting up when I'm over there and I get free candy? Maybe. Well, there we go. I don't know what I'm doing today. I mean, I can relate, because most evenings I go home and drink a cup of coffee and it like relaxes me and makes me go. I, I fall asleep on the couch. <laughs> the time. I can't. I'll stay up till like four o'clock in the morning. I can drink Actually, coffee. We all day. had another student who was uh, the same type of situation. Uh, he was extremely ADHD, and for some reason the medication didn't work. But he learned that if he drank a coffee in the morning before he came to school, that he it helped him. Wow! Come. Again, That's it's the caffeine. It wakes you up and calms you down. Yeah. So. so in your mind, what do you think the dyslexia program, you know, uh, offers Eastern Kentucky and the Heinemann Settlement School, and what impact does it make? I think it makes a tremendous impact on this area because we have a lot of children in this area who do have dyslexia, mm -hmm. and uh, so it gives them the opportunity to actually learn to read to be successful. Uh, I, we've had lots of our students have gone on to college mm -hmm. you know, and become successful people. So I think that's... What would you say is one of the, one of the greatest success stories? We don't mention names here, you know, that much, but, you know, we, you know, someone who's really exceeded expectations. Well, there's been several. Uh, like I said, you know, if... If they can stick in school and, you know, go on to college, mm -hmm. you know, to me, yeah. to be successful, you know, to go out and uh, get a job. and I mean, because we've got several of them who've done that. So, oh, great. I think. I guess, I guess I'm a little biased there because I have my own perception of what success is. But yeah. That's it's great. But really, you know, even, you know if, even if you don't go to college... You know, if you're still able to become, you know, get a job mm -hmm. and make a living, to me, it's a success. successful. Yeah, it's a success mm -hmm. in of itself. Right. Certainly. So, what do you think people can expect from the dyslexia program moving forward? Well, I think we're going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, I think... And the, the counties that we are moving out into seem to be very excited about the idea of having our program there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't take it as gr for granted mm -hmm. quite as much, I think, as Knott County does. 
Knott County's all had the program for all these years, and they'd always known that they could, you know, come to us. Whereas these other counties have been begging mm-hmm. for somebody that can actually work with these kids for years. I believe Perry County told us, you know, anything you guys want, we'll give it to you. Right. <laughs> so and Leslie County, you know, has been even more enthusiastic. Right. Uh, yeah, with Robert Roark, with the he's been helping us with that. He's over the moon about it. So. It's nice to have that enthusiasm. Good things happening with the dyslexia program. Um, Ola, is there any way, uh, I know we have a lot of donors and supporters who are very interested in the uh, dyslexia program. Is there any ways that they could be involved with it? Any way they could um, support it in any way, donate to it? Any, Any needs at the moment? I can't think of anything in particular, uh, of course, you know, the the, be, the box tops that uh, DAR uh, saves for us is a, has always been a tremendous help. Uh, they've changed the program a little bit, and so you're no longer having to clip mm-hmm. the box tops and send them in. You can just, you know, scan your grocery receipt. And so that has uh, cut down on the number of box tops that we've gotten in the since they've started that mm. people just aren't used to it but it's actually not that difficult to, to do it so i'd like to encourage you know everyone to to start doing yeah. that and you learned how to use, how to use zoom this year they can learn how to scan right. the receipt yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not hard at all yeah. <laughs> so. i didn't know you could do that though mm-hmm. is it like the qr code on it or something you can scan or uh you just download the uh, the app, uh, box okay. top app on your phone, and then you just take a picture of your receipt. And That's amazing. It it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any closing thoughts, Ola? Any anything that you can think of? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ola, we, we thank you for, for joining us uh, on such short notice. I just <laughs> popped up and asked you last night, probably about 5 o'clock, <laughs> and you responded very quickly. And, well, thank um, you for having You me. saved us uh, for this week. Yeah, we almost didn't have a podcast. Yeah, so you this was the only day we were going to be together the rest of the week, so it had to happen today. So I'm glad you came through <laughs> and, and, and saved our, our podcast for this week. Ola, thank you uh, for joining us. And with that, Miss Ola has left the cabin, and uh, we are thankful for her for coming on the podcast today. Uh, lifesaver. Yeah, really a last-minute save. She's a lifesaver in many ways. She saves us from our on our podcast. She helps children to read, changes their lives. you got to love Ola Pigman. Yeah, she's the changing lives. In, uh, in, in our slogan. Yeah, in change, our slogan. Changing yeah. lives and celebrating heritage. Um, so, yep. Great episode with Ola Pigman today. I hope you all enjoy that. And as always, we want to give our, give you all notice of some upcoming events that we are having here at the Hyman Settlement School. Um, obviously not a lot going on right now, given the coronavirus um, pandemic happening, shutting everything down and making our lives bored. Um, but we do have Dumplings and Dancing coming up November 2nd through the 7th. Keep in mind that this will be a virtual Dumplings and Dancing. Uh, so you can tune into this every night on our Facebook page and enjoy workshops uh, from people such as Kristen Smith, who would have been our guest today but had her uh, some complications arise where she had to postpone. Um, also, Ronnie Lundy, Weeda Michael, Kent Hubbard, who we recorded uh, his yesterday. That was pretty good. Country yeah. Ham. Making the Country Ham, yeah. Yeah. I'm, pr- I'm very excited to edit it. The video looks cool. Uh, and also Lois Matus and Philip Jameson will be offering workshops each night. And I heard a little talk in the office earlier between um, Randy and Sarah uh, offering some music each night or something of that sort one night. So that should be fun, something to tune, tune into. Um, and also uh, Reading Corps recruitment, Jordan. Yeah, so we're in our second round of recruitment. We, You guys know about our 17 tutors that we've already got. But we're starting our second round because the need never stops. So if you're looking for a full-time position in any of the Leslie County, Knott County, or Perry County elementary schools, you can contact me at jordan at heinman.org 
or check it out on our website, uh, hymen.org forward slash serve. Yep, so check that out. And as also, uh, we want to recognize donors who have contributed to us in the past couple of weeks since our last episode. Um, we want to recognize this week the E.O. Robinson Mountain Fund, who recently granted us a grant of $10,000 for our dyslexia program. Uh, we appreciate that very much. And also the Twin Creeks chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution uh, came through with a donation in the past couple of weeks as well. And we thank you for that. And uh, thank the DAR in general, as always, uh, for their continued and faithful support through the years of the Hyman Settlement School. Um, if you have enjoyed this podcast, then please uh, give us a follow on Facebook. Um, we have a page there, uh, facebook.com slash HymanCast. We'll get you there. Um, and you can subscribe to the podcast through Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, uh, or even on our YouTube channel where you can watch the video of us having the conversation. Uh, so if you want to see what our faces are like, get a, a more intimate feel and relationship. Yeah. I saw somebody comment. Actually, we were talking about comments earlier. Yeah. Um, when it, they commented on Sarah Kate's post that she shared and said it was like having like, like hanging out with you, and that's yeah. what we want. That's what I wanted uh, with the video effort. Uh, just uh, feel like you're here in the room with us, yeah. getting and, to know us. And speaking of comments, you know, we, we want to be able to recognize you guys. And don't think that because you post on a Facebook page that we ain't going to look at it because we see it all. Oh, yeah. I am keeping my eyes on that always, looking to see how many people have downloaded it, comments, interactions. Yeah. I eat it up. So, so leave us a comment because we'll look at it and we might even recognize you on our next yeah, I'm for sure. Test. And uh, leave us a review, leave us a rating on the podcast platforms that will help us to get more activity going and more um, uh, appearances and that sort of thing. Get our faces out there. Yeah, the troublesome boys. Make us popular. All right. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in uh, this week to the Hyman Cast. My name is Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And we'll catch you next time. The Hyman Cast is brought to you by the faithful and generous supporters of the Hyman Settlement School. For over 100 years, we've been celebrating heritage and changing lives in central Appalachia. If you're interested in supporting the work of Hyman Settlement School, you can go to our website at www.hyman.org, or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the handle at Hyman School.